April 2024 will be the biggest and most important month this year, guys. Look at this. Everything is merged together here. All the planets are very close together. Uh, lots of new beginnings. Solar eclipse of the century is happening there. <laughs> Powerful solar eclipse, which means new beginning solar eclipse, which means there is earthquake in your soul at certain level because there are earthquakes as well on Earth. And this earthquake changes and gives you a new initiative, new direction in life, new identity areas. These are my longest horoscopes this year. I'm not going to do such long horoscopes, but this is such an important month. A new beginning, another new beginning. Saturn conjunct Mars, new cycle starts, which means you're going to have for the next two years, new tasks. The great work that you have to do, where you have to build perseverance, where you have to put a lot of your efforts, where is that going to be? And you might have a master finished work within two years, but big challenges there as well. And the biggest event of the year, Jupiter conjunct Uranus. <laughs> it will never happen again, Jupiter to conjunct Uranus in Taurus in your life. It will repeat in 84 years once in a lifetime opportunity. I can't tell you how excited I am. New cycle. Well, will your source of abundance and opportunities come to you over the next 14 years? If you catch this message, if you understand it, you can have an opportunity for the next 14 years to be abundant. So we'll speak about each of the 12 signs. But before I start, I want to tell you that this is my birthday month, April. If I'm still alive after April <laughs> with all the eclipses in the beginnings, I want to make you a gift. All my courses will be 30, 40%, sometimes even more off. I do this only once per year for two weeks. This is the time. All my courses, personal courses, if you want to learn astrology of a thousand hours, they're short courses, long courses, I'll put them. Uh, you can buy them now. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> uh, and we still have a few places for the retreat with me in Bulgaria at the end of May. Uh, we have three places, I think. So quickly write to me if you're interested. We'll organize everything quickly for you. Uh, this is the most personal retreat I ever do because I'll be looking at all of your horoscopes uh, individually. Well, it's very uh, private and it's very personal. It's a small group only. So thank you so much. Let's start. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising. Scorpio, this month starts with an eclipse in your sixth house. Oops, let's see. It doesn't directly affect you, but maybe it can activate. Not always, you know. Some eclipses, many people don't feel them. Usually you'd feel them if it falls in your sign, in the opposite sign. But it still activates a house for you, especially if you have some planets in Aries there or Libra. It can be very powerful. You can see those things playing out. I'll have to mention them in case you see it. So you'll see that you're in tone with the cosmic clock. Well, eclipse in the sixth house, solar eclipse, which means new beginnings, uh, which can be activated very suddenly, quickly, and it's new direction in life because Aries rules new beginnings as well. Eclipses, new moon eclipses mean new, new beginnings. And the North Node that is causing the eclipse means new beginnings. Where are those new beginnings possible? Six house, they can, they're possible with, for example, your work or with employees if you have. And usually the changes of an eclipse are fast. You'd see them within a couple of months to three months of the eclipse. Uh, so, for example, you might get a new offer for work and it comes a bit, it shakes you up or it might be a new project that comes up for you and uh, starts moving fast, you know. Or it might be that you suddenly realize you want to be in a different career, you know, and do that. Of course, it can be preceded by some kind of crisis, maybe some, you know, some shake-up initially because around eclipses we have more earthquakes naturally and, and natural disasters as well but that's again that's to it changes shifts the layers releases karma but something fated can come to you in regards to your work in regards to your employment employees as well also six houses your health habits sometimes it can be a crisis if there is an eclipse activating your sixth house with health I'm not saying all Scorpios will have that, but you have to be, you know, a bit careful, health accidents and so on. It's a very impulsive energy of this eclipse areas. It can be something more <coughs> acute. What is the purpose of this? 
The purpose is that you shed your old skin and old habits and because uh, six houses habits. And if any health problems comes here, it's due to lifestyle. It's not anything genetic. It's not anything. It's something lifestyle related that you can change. So it's like a it's like a alarm that's saying, okay, change something in your lifestyle. It might be your posture that you have to change, how you eat, how you work out, you exercise, how you sleep, uh, to create more healthy habits. And this is an incredible rare opportunity. There won't be another eclipse in Aries with the North Node, solar eclipse in Aries with the North Node for 19 years ahead. So this is this real opportunity. It might happen through a crisis but, or it might happen by an inner impulse that you want to initiate the new health routines, lifestyle habits. Hopefully it's not through, you know, oh, you have some health problems, so you have to do that. But you can totally, eclipses are about shedding old skin and new personality, new identity. It's Aries. The symbol and the, of Aries is I am. So I would advise you, to use this mantra on this eclipse and say in current time, I am, and say what kind of health style habit you want. I am an early riser. I am sober. I am an athlete. I am an exerciser. <laughs> Just affirm it with this new identity. Aries is about identities and the universe wants you to create a new identity with your health habits, with your routines, with your work, uh, with your nutrition as well. You can, <clears throat> you know, so even undertaking some kind of a workout routine can be great for you, Scorpios. All right. Um, sixth house is also debt. Maybe you can overcome something in a debt, you know, and sixth house is, okay, on the negative side, sixth house can be, enemies or litigation cases, accusations of any sort. But there's such strong energy you have there. Uh, you have Ma Mars energy. You naturally, when you enter into battle, we all know Scorpios usually win. <laughs> yeah, Scorpios are amazing at battles and they're strategic. They're, because Mars, because Aries is their sixth house of the battleground of how they deal with problems. There is no better sign to deal with crisis, with problems than Scorpio. And very much that's due to Aries being on the sixth house that rules all of those things. And this eclipse there can summon you to deal with some such situation of more practical nature, to quickly sort it out, to fix it. But you have the resources, you have the power. Um, there's also Mercury retrograde in your sixth house. So you might be revising something about your health habits, you know, about your work, about some work project that you're going over. You know, something new is coming there through the eclipse, but something else, oh, Mercury retrograde is like reevaluation, deeper consideration, rethinking, and so on. And especially if you're expecting to have a month, you have things planned at your work, at your daily, you know, you wake up, you do this, 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 six houses, our everyday routines, what we do um, with an eclipse there and Mercury retrograde. <laughs> you, it's not going to be according to plan. It doesn't mean it will be worse. It, it's just going to be, you have to be prepared for surprises. You have to be prepared that the routine is not going to go. There will be some disruption there with the routines. You might need to be repaired for something or this. Six house is also about repairing. And this eclipse there gives you the power to fix problems. Mercury will reveal retrograde, will reveal what you've missed that has to be fixed in some way. All right, so you're the problem fixer this month. The other big event is that Mars and Saturn will be joined on the 10th of April in your fifth house and they start a two-year new cycle. Saturn and Mars tell us where we have to be more serious, use more willpower, more strength, where we are forging the virtues of patience, the virtues of willpower, which means undertake overcoming some problems there first and being more tough. So where do you have to be more tough? Where you have to have more staying, saying no power, more self-control, limitation. That's with pleasures. That's with 
uh, any kind of fifth house is entertainment, pleasures, romance, even children. <laughs> because Neptune has been for 14 years in your fifth house. Maybe you allowed romantically things by the vague or maybe you're romantically allowing people that were not the most uh, reliable or maybe that were a bit wishy-washy or you're a bit rose colored eyes now saturn and mars conjunction there can burst your bubble in regards to certain romantic partners or can or in regards to how your love life or how you have fun and entertainment and saturn and mars says well there are consequences if you've been too lax or relaxed you know so now you need to take things into your hands use willpower Maybe limit yourself with pleasures, entertainments in the name of something bigger, in the name of having more control there. Uh, maybe you need to be more selective romantically as well. And almost like brutal, you might eliminate romantic interests from your life who don't answer because you've been too allowing till now with Neptune there. Now Saturn, Mars saying for the next two years, you have to build discrimination which is very saturnian in quality no saying no power uh quality control saturn and willpower as well mars uh no nonsense attitude there also if you have some um, beautiful talent creative artistic great ideas which is also the fifth house it doesn't have to be just artsy craft or anything like that it might be great idea business idea whatever it's your baby you've born it with your own brain Fifth house is your intelligence, your brilliance, your uniqueness, your talents. And Neptune there, maybe for many years, was nurturing your creative talents in a beautiful, inspirational way. And now Saturn and Mars come there and they say, it's time for you to mm -hmm, do this. Roll up your sleeves and do the hard work of not just fooling around, playing around. Now do something practical of those talents. Do something you know, do the hard work of Saturn, the ambition of Mars, uh, overcome obstacles to maybe those ideas that you have, to put them in order and to bring them out, to make something valuable, useful, practical out of them. Of course, there can be some challenges with romantic partners uh, because you're no more that allowing, you're becoming, there might be some challenges also uh, to, to force you to build those qualities through your children. Maybe you're allowing your children to be too, <laughs> you know, maybe you need to be more strict. Maybe you need to be more organized with your fun and leisure time, more deliberate, let's say, with those activities. And the results of Saturn-Mars conjunction, you can, you can start now, but it takes two years, this whole cycle. I'm not sure what you might com complete it earlier, but the results are the most satisfying one because you did them with your own sweat and blood, <laughs> Saturn and Mars. Uh, you, it's like a great work. So maybe you'd have, yes, it might strain initially the relationships with your children, with Saturn, if you become more like demanding or with your lovers or romantic partner, or it can drain out the fun out of your life if you have to be more, deliberate about those things but you might end up with great results after that you might end up with some idea that you materialize and embody it and you're so proud of it or a child that you're uh, way more happy with their development and so on and now the last but not least i would say this is the most rare event it's never going to happen again in your life scorpio <laughs> because the, the saturn mars conjunction in the fifth house will repeat in around 28 years there is a, there will be an eclipse again in your sixth house with the north node in around 18 years but jupiter uranus cycle that starts now in your seventh house and this one directly affects you directly directly affects you will not repeat ever in your life and it's a cycle that starts now on april 20th you might be feeling it already from the beginning of the year because they've been close together the official start is april 20th but it will take after that 14 years till they meet again in 13 14 years in your ninth house so it's the seeds are being sown now for some new beginnings in your life uh, and the energy of Jupiter in Uranus is beautiful. It's uplifting. It can raise your vibration very fast. It can, and it's connected to relationships for you in the seventh house. 
You see this interesting combination here. You put some boundaries in romantic life, in, in, in your indulgences of any sort. With Saturn and Mars in the fifth house, you're a bit incorporate this more self-controlled behaviors. And also with the eclipse in the sixth house that calls us for uh, health routine overhaul. Uh, and something incredible comes to you as divine blessings because Jupiter and Uranus are high vibrational planets of God's graces through you from another. Maybe you can suddenly find a really inspirational partner, especially if you're Scorpio around, I would say, from 19 to 25 degrees Scorpio, sun, moon arising. The, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will be exactly opposite your degrees, but all the other Scorpios, they'll have it in the seventh house. So some sudden opportunity can come to you from others. It's like a luck that falls on your lap uh, and it comes to you from another. Maybe another mentions to you something and it opens a new vista of possibility for you and you start, you, you get an idea and you start dreaming about something and it's kind of, breaks your idea of what is possible and expands it for you uh, or maybe something brand new happens with your partner some new phase in their life or you start a business partnership or maybe a brand new partner appears in your life that really shakes you up that inspires you um, Jupiter and Uranus are very open-minded influences. They might be even foreign influence, a very different person that enters your life romantically in a business matter, in a friendship matter, that uh, even can become whatever they teach you or present to you or enter into your life or bring into your life. It can become a source of financial abundance for you. This conjunction is in Taurus a source of financial material opportunities for the next 14 years. So stay open the spring for the northerners for people outside people uh, people that are you know of course you notice when they're well-meaning to you because you you just feel the energy they're high vibrational people they're interesting they're different uh and they help you have breakthroughs and awakenings that's what jupiter uranus in the seventh house is and they can be suddenly falling in love with someone, uh, suddenly meeting someone or business partnership that becomes a sense of, source of wealth or collaboration of some sort. Uh, but definitely something will be, or certain circumstances that come to you from outside, but it's not always the seventh house, a person. Sometimes it's something that happens to you from outside that really shifts your perspective, shifts your whole energy. Seven house can be new contracts, new agreements that can be beneficial for you. Um, of course, Mercury is retrograde till the 25th of March. Maybe if you can sign the contracts after 25th, don't worry, the Jupiter Uranus influence stays for the next couple of months, even further. Seven house Jupiter Uranus can also be like suddenly you can start big attracting a lot more clients say you have a business or say you work with clients uh, viewers popularity you can suddenly something becomes viral for example jupiter uranus is very fast growing energy seven houses of business services you might be like uh, you know if you're selling something uh, seven houses your client base it can suddenly expand and grow can be good beginning to start some business, definitely. And that kind of ties again with fifth house. If you have an original idea and you start working hard on it and being serious about it, Jupiter Uranus can make you whole, reach more audience faster, grow it faster, and so on. Oh, I forgot to say that Saturn-Mars conjunction can also indicate some education. Fifth house is about learning as well, that you undertake some educational course or whatever. And you become more serious about such matters. So there you go. I mean, this Jupiter Uranus is bringing opportunity to you that can roll out very fast, that will be giving you, granting you, and that you'll be unfolding, not just this April, for the next 14 years. And just be open to welcome others and their opinion and what can come to you from outside and to reach out to others, to build bridges yourself, 
because that's where the power now, that's where the lucky draw is. Thank you.